Good day. Welcome here from the Faculty of Theology. My name is Professor Regin Nial. I'm the Dean at the Faculty of Theology and I am excited to welcome you uh, as our prospective students for 2022 uh, and also possibly staying with us the course uh, for uh, your undergraduate, your postgraduate studies as well. Today I will introduce you to some of the people that will journey with you throughout uh, the course of your studies, uh, people that will become your teachers, but also mentors and friends along the way. So first I will introduce Professor Chantal Weber. Uh, professor Weber is a professor in practical theology. Uh, she is focused on faith formation, uh, youth work as well, and she is passionate about the development of young people. And then also we have Professor Dion Foster. Professor Foster is a professor in systematic theology and ethics. Professor Foster also is an ordained minister in the Methodist Church. And Professor Foster is also the director of the Bayes and Dia Center for Public Theology. And uh, we will say more about him later. So who is the Faculty of Theology at Stellenbosch University? Uh, as a faculty, we are proud uh, to be amongst the top faculties of theology on our continent. Uh, we are also amongst the best in the world and we have strong relationships with faculties of theology all over the world. Um, regularly we bring together here at Stellenbosch the best theologians in the world. Uh, sometimes we say we bring the rock stars of theology uh, to Stellenbosch and uh, if you are passionate about theology then this is the place to be. But before I go further, let me ask Professor Dion Foster, who is a systematic theologian, to perhaps say a few words about what is theology. Uh, Professor Foster, can you share with our prospective students what is theology and what are they going to be confronted with? Thanks, Professor Nell. And uh, yes, from my side, also welcome to our prospective students. So theology is the study of what people believe. And particularly in our context, we are looking at what people believe in terms of the Christian faith. And uh, so if you were to ask yourself, does God exist? Where did everything that is created come from? What is the role and responsibility of the church? Why do we have people who are men and people who are women? Where do all of these particular things come from? So these are some of the things that we try to study in theology. And of course, there are different ways in which we do that. And the sources of our knowledge are different as well. Sometimes we turn to the scriptures, to the Old Testament and the New Testament to know what we believe. We also very often uh, interview people, ask them what their beliefs are. And sometimes we look at the history of Christianity and the church over the ages to know not only what we believe, but, but why are there all of these different churches and movements in history? I, I think it's one of the most exciting things that you can do. Fascinating. Thank you, Professor Foster. Now, maybe you have seen on the application forms that there are three different options for what you can do. And I'm going to ask Professor uh, Chantal Weber perhaps to say something about those three different options. Uh, she is, of course, passionate about youth work, so maybe she might say more about that. Uh, but she will just explain to you when we talk about BDF, BTH, etc. What would that mean? Professor Weber, can you share with our prospective students what are the three, three, the three themes uh, that uh, they can work on? Thanks, Prof. Now, so yeah, I mean, it's actually really two streams. The first one is a Bachelor of Theology. Um, that degree is focused on those of us who want to engage in Christian ministry more. Uh, we want to learn more about the theolo theological text, want to learn more about the church, more about how we came to be uh, theology. And so that's a three-year program, but it does shift into two spheres. The first one is you could do a general ministry Bachelor of Theology degree, uh, and then you could also do a Bachelor of Theology degree that specializes in children and youth work. Both of them allow you to do some modules in sociology and psychology, uh, as well as within the three different discipline groups uh, that you, you will encounter at the faculty. The Bachelor of Divinity degree is the second core option, and those are for the ones who want to become ministers specifically within the Reformed tradition of churches. 
maybe Anglican, um, uh, Ingeer Kerk, United Reformed Church, and so forth. And that's a four-year program, but it's connected toward a journey towards the MDiv program. You cannot be licensed within those traditions without doing an MDiv. And so the Bachelor of Divinity, four years undergrad towards the MDiv. The Bachelor of Theology is also for those congregations and churches who do not require the BDiv degree, but do require some form of theological qualification. And so that would be the encouragement for those who are not part of the Reformed tradition and who do not require uh, the degree all the way to the MDiv. So I hope that that helps a bit, Prof. Now. No, oh, fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. And um, I, I, as I indicated, uh, Professor Weber is passionate about youth work. So I'm interested to know, Prof. Weber, what are the kind of, let's call it, job opportunities for students who completed uh, their programs here at, at Stellenbosch, the BTH that mm -hmm. you refer to, the BTH with youth work, but then also the bead of uh, what are the kind of job prospects for, for students who complete these programs? Mm -hmm. Of course, the immediate one would probably be a Christian ministry, uh, and that would be in a local congregation who does not require a Masters of Divinity degree. Uh, but it could also be Christian uh, ministry in different community contexts. So many of the students who graduated the Bachelor of Theology degree could work within different NGO spaces with a Christian ministry focus. But then, of course, with, with uh, youth work specifically, you could become a qualified youth worker within the sector of youth development. And so there you would work within different ministerial offices, with our government uh, leaders and so forth, but also within local church congregations uh, who require uh, trained youth workers. Um, but then we've also found, uh, Prof, now that many of the students doing the Bachelor of Theology degree also choose to go into disciplines like education after the theology degree. So you could then add a year doing a postgrad diploma in education to become a school teacher. And there specifically, you could then become a high school teacher within our context. We've also just recently heard quite a few of our students are moving within the realm of journalism. So you use the Bachelor of Theology degree and you'd like to, as a Christian young person, go into journal journalism. And so you can exercise your gifting and strengths there too. Others have gone into different other uh, uh, fields like marketing. Uh, but I think what, what you need to ask yourself there is, as a Christian young person or Christian person who's passionate about ministry, not necessarily wanting to be a pastor, where else could I go? And so there are other spheres of ministry and work that you'd be able to uh, engage with, but you'd have the strong theological grounding that would help you uh, do your job as well as you can. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So there are many different options available. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, it, uh, it is very exciting to be able to interact with students in a small little campus where some of them go into law, some of them later go into education, youth work, ministry, uh, journalism as well, even perhaps business, I can imagine. Uh, and, and, and those kind of interactions, I, I can imagine, cause for a lot of interesting uh, moments in the faculty. So I want to ask uh, Professor Forster, I know I've heard that you also in public theology so I don't know if you could say just something about uh, public theology and what, what eventually students go and do, you know, when they do public theology. Maybe, maybe there are some well-known names of public theologians that, that you can share with, with our prospective students. Yeah, uh, Prof. Nell, absolutely. And uh, we know in South Africa that religion plays a very, very important role in both individual and in social lives. And we've seen certainly that um, many of the great achievements which have come in South Africa's history have come through people who have come out of ministry or churches. Think about people like uh, Bayez Nodia, after whom our public theology center is named, uh, people like Desmond Tutu. So many, many people have come through this particular way of thinking about society. Now, public theology specifically is wanting to ask the question, if we believe certain things to be true, for example, if we believe that God creates people good, if we believe that every person bears the image of God, then how should we live our lives? How should we structure our societies politically, economically? How should we deal with issues of difference like gender or age or income? 
in a way that expresses the dignity and appreciates the goodness of all humanity. So we often find that people who, who specialize in those disciplines, who look at public theology or ethics, often end up working sometimes in churches, but sometimes also in civil society, in faith-based organizations, in, in forms of ministry which are working for the betterment, for justice in our society and in our country. And I'm grateful to say that Stellenbosch is at the forefront of that work. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. That's exciting. And, and I mean, if, if that hasn't sort of whet your appetite uh, for a moment, uh, let's, let's, let me go on another angle. And I want to ask Professor Foster, I heard that um, uh, you, you're not only a lecturer, professor uh, at Stellenbosch University, but you're also a father of, of a student at, at Stellenbosch University, not necessarily at the faculty, we're still working on that, <laughs> but as a, as a father. So maybe as a father, you want to say something to uh, the parents out there who are concerned about their children maybe moving out of the house or joining the faculty of theology. What has been your experience as a, as a parent, you know, having a, a someone, a daughter who study at Stellenbosch? Prof. Nell, I can certainly say, and to all of the parents uh, out there, that Stellenbosch University is truly a, a wonderful place for your children to come and to be formed for life. Um, I mean, it's, it, it is a place in which they will encounter the richness of our diversity mm -hmm. in South Africa, in which they will learn to become independent and responsible. And I think one of the gifts of, of, of allowing your children to come to the Faculty of Theology is that we are something special. Mm -hmm. um, we not only offer a, an academic degree, but we also build a community. Mm -hmm. And it's a community which is built uh, around fellowship. Uh, we engage in worship together on a Wednesday. Uh, we offer mentorship, we, we care for our students. Our, our uh, TSC, for example, is really involved in mentoring and helping uh, students to go through all of the stages, not only of their academic development, but also of their social development and their faith development. So I think if you're wanting to send your children somewhere where they're not only going to get a degree, but they're going to get the, what we would call perhaps the graduate attributes, mm. the skills that are necessary for life, you're making a good choice if you send them to us. Mm, wonderful. You can see as a, a parent that is proud of Stellenbosch and also a, a parent that is passionate also about theology. Uh, Professor Weber, can I come back to uh, something that uh, Professor Foster mentioned there? He referred to the diversity uh, at the faculty. Uh, would you want to say something about the diversity at the faculty and how the faculty also shape uh, the lives of, of future leaders uh, to be able to respond to the diversities of, of our society? Mm, sure. Interesting question. So when many of you think about Stellenbosch, what do you think of? I think for me it's been very interesting to see over time how Stellenbosch has become such a diverse community, not just in our faculty in the town, but in our faculty. Um, in terms of church, we are so many different churches meeting together there. We are doing academy together, we are doing church together, we are doing life together. And so there you will meet people who are from various denominational backgrounds. Uh, at one point we actually uh, did a survey of our first year group and we found 22 different church groups mm. in one class. And so in terms of different types of churches, which means different types of ways of being and expressing church, you will definitely engage with students from different ecclesial backgrounds. Also, students who are still trying to figure out where they are in their walk with uh, uh, God. But then in terms of uh, racial and economic class groupings, definitely we are a variety of scholars uh, as teachers. You will engage with different people in terms of uh, racial group, but also in terms of economic classing and background. And then also in terms of gender, um, we have various uh, scholars and uh, teachers and lecturers who will be teaching you, but more so you'll be engaging theology in your classroom with so many different people from different uh, racial economic classes and gender groupings. Uh, so we would love to embrace that diversity. I mean, God is a, a God of diversity. And so without a faculty of theology that doesn't embrace that, uh, you'll also experience the diversity in your classroom debates, in your discussions, in your assumed ways of living and doing. And there too, you will be enriched, 
encouraged, stretched to be able to embrace the South African diversity we live and experience. But let me ask you, I, as a perhaps a Christian that grew up in a particular faith tradition, mm -hmm. uh, passionate about uh, how I grew up, shouldn't I feel a bit scared to go into that kind of open space? Maybe, you know, things will change. Uh, shouldn't I feel a bit uh, apprehensive about that? And I want to also, uh, Professor Foster, you to respond as a parent. But, but first, uh, Professor Weber. <laughs> Prof, as you said that, I immediately thought of the phrase, what? Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> because you're going to be stretched, guys. I mean, I come from a very conservative evangelical background. And so as an academic lecturer, uh, I too have been stretched. But can I just say that we come alongside each other. We learn from each other. There's mentorship, as Prof. Uh, Foster has introduced. We are privileged to have the chaplain of the university in our faculty, Father Desmond Lambrooks. And so he even journeys alongside students wrestling with this. And definitely, you're going to unpack all those things you thought you knew about yourself, about God, and about church, but you're going to do it in a safe space. There are those of us who will be able to mentor you one-on-one, -on -one, but as you've also heard from Prof. Uh, Prof. Foster, the, the Theological Student Committee, yeah, they go beyond board in terms of really catching you, having the conversations, trying to make you feel at home. So in essence, I would say be afraid, be very afraid, but be open to grow, be open to develop, uh, because we want to see you grow, not only in terms of your own being and your own faith tradition, but also in terms of your journey with theology itself. Wonderful. So what you are saying is that you, even in, in your own faith tradition, you were able to grow deeper mm -hmm. into your faith tradition, mm -hmm. but also being able to respond to people who might feel different mm -hmm. uh, and to also live amongst people who are different. Yeah, it, it, it gives that. you kind of perspective, right? Because mm -hmm. you, know, you want to understand who you are amidst all, all the other voices. And so definitely the purpose is to allow you to understand who you are, and that includes your faith tradition better. Uh, but then also to see and position yourself within this diverse Christian community as well. Yeah. So, Professor Foster, shouldn't I as a parent feel a bit, you know, uh, be afraid, be very afraid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, my sense is that um, your, your children are coming to a place where they really are now going to enter into that next step of their faith development. Mm. I mean, part of what they're going to be doing is to, to work out for themselves, what is it that I believe? What is it that I'm passionate about? And my experience has been over the years that our students don't give up their traditions. Mm. They grow to appreciate them even more, but they recognize that their tradition is, is, is one tradition amongst many. Mm. You know, Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, I have to be a good Anglican in order to be a good ecumenist. And I think that that's true. I mean, just sitting here today, we have someone from the reform tradition, uh, someone from the evangelical tradition, myself as a Methodist, and you're going to encounter people from all of these traditions working with your, your children as they grow, as they learn. But I think you can trust them with us. You know, our, our desire is not to break down their faith. It's not to, it's not to cause them to question where they come from but to help them to find ways to express that more clearly, to, to believe those aspects that are, are truest in, in ways that are, are responsible and authentic, that will enrich their faith. And, you know, of course, many of the questions that we ask will be asked regardless of whether we ask them in the faculty. They're being asked in the world. But what we try to do is we try to help your children to find ways to answer them with confidence and with humility and with Christ-likeness. Wonderful. Now, can I pin you down on just two quick tips for a parent who is also tuning in, listening, uh, and who has to make that final decision? What would be those two tips to, to that parent? So, yeah, I, I have two tips for, for the parents out there. The first one is to say, encourage your, your child to make the very best of this time of their life. You know, if they're coming for, for a, a BTH, they'll be with us for three years, a BDIV for four years maybe. And this is going to be one of the best times of their life. Encourage them to embrace it, to enter into it with passion, excitement and curiosity. 
The second thing that I'd also want to encourage you to do is, is to support them as they go through their journey. You know, in their first year, they may come to ask some difficult questions of themselves. They may come to ask some different question, difficult questions about society, but encourage them. My experience has been that by the time they finish their journey, they leave here with, with tools, with a faith that's deep and rich, that will bless you, that will make you proud as parents of what they've done, and that equips them for service and ministry in the world. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Thank you, Professor Foster. And mm -hmm. Professor Weber, two tips to the prospective students out there, the young people who are making those final decisions. Mm -hmm. Perhaps some of them are now busy with their matric exams uh, and preparing them for Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. What would be those two tips to our prospective students? Sure. Well, probably the first would be to take the leap jump. If you're wrestling with some of these fears we've mentioned today, I would just say, take the leap. It's going to be the best three or four years of your life. You will never get this experience anywhere else. Um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're someone that's introverted, take the jump. You're going to encounter people that's going to stretch you. If you're someone that's extroverted and game, well, you're going to experience some of us who's going to stretch you too. So firstly, I would say, take the jump. Secondly, I think be open to flexibility. Be open to change. Be open to learn. Um, and then come and really enjoy the experience with us at the faculty, but also in this town of Stellenbosch. It's really a unique opportunity to be in this town explore this town and get to know students from other discipline groups as well. Wonderful. We are very excited to welcome you. And as you can see, uh, we are ready to support the journey with you. Uh, we are ready also to answer any questions that you might pose, uh, any questions you might still have. Please reach out to us and we will be available to support you on this journey. We are excited for next year. Hopefully we'll be able to welcome you here at Stellenbosch in person. And, and we believe that together we can make a change in this world. Good day and welcome back again. Today we are going to talk to Tamara Wickham, uh, one of our students, one of our senior students at the faculty. And also uh, for the last year, or so she's been the chairperson of our Theological Student Committee. So she's one of our student leaders yeah. at the faculty. Can I ask Tamara first, I'm not going to introduce you, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to our students and also parents who are interested in studying faculty at the Faculty of Theology. Okay. Tell us a bit, who is Tamara? What did you study? Okay, hi everybody. So I'm Tamara. I am currently a final year BTH general student. Um, so that means that my subjects mostly range from um, faculty subjects as well as the BA. Um, my final year, so this means I'll be doing my postgrad next year, hopefully. Um, and I'm also venturing out my postgrad outside of the faculty, so this means hopefully journalism, teaching, law, etc. Wonderful. So, yeah. so, so Tamara, initially, what made you to decide to do theology at Stellenbosch University? What was that final tipping point that, that made you uh, to decide to come to Stellenbosch? Um, so I knew that I really wanted to work with kids and work within an environment that promotes like education and continually, continuously making people, once we're educated, being able to know that once we're educated, we can do things with it and being better individuals once we have this knowledge. Um, and theology was also just in that list because it was like a very few that really ticked my boxes when I applied um, and theology was that. So once I looked at the youth work program um, and I saw that this could help me empower the youth in the community, I was like, this is most probably what I should be doing. <laughs> yes, yes. And would you say that in terms of your expectations before coming to Stellenbosch and having the experience at Stellenbosch, that your expectations, expectations have been met? Oh yeah, my expectations have been met because I think most people think, okay, so um, we come to theology, we're going to study the Bible, etc. And it's like nothing like that at all. Like, my expectations were blown. Um, I mean, like the things that we did, I couldn't even comprehend. So my expectations were blown and I think I was stretched. The experience that I got, yeah, I know. 
Can, can you maybe, can I push you a bit to, to tell us a bit more about, you know, what are those things that, that were explored, a uh, subject matter with, with, within the Faculty of Theology? Okay, so if we're going to look at the Faculty of Theology, I think um, we were really stretched to speak about things, issues, deep issues, um, and not just within our context specifically, so not just religion and Christianity, but also within our context and how these issues affect us. So if I look at like pastoral care and counseling within our trauma, within our, in our context, mm. how it affects me personally, ethics, the systems, why we do things in the church, um, the different role players within the church, in Old Testament and New Testament, we also got to learn about how do we read the Bible? How do we look at the text? Um, and that outside of your degree, so helpful. Because like when you sit in church, you're just like, oh my word, this is how they got there. And then your own experience as an individual is also just stretched and increased so much further because then you realize that, oh, this is what is happening. This is how we read the text. And then the text, and also then on your own personal journey, um, I just know in my own personal journey, like this is how I would want to go forward. So like my personal journey starting the faculty first year and now two, compl two completely different journeys. So now I'm like at this point where it's, I take it, I take full control of my journey and the theology kind of just helped guide that along as well. No, thank you for that. I think it's so important that we speak from our own personal experience yeah. and from our own personal journey and narrative and how that has evolved. Uh, would you want to say a bit more about uh, that personal journey, where Tamara is coming from and yeah. how it has shaped uh, the, this There's, experience? So Tamara, I, so Tamara <laughs> um, I come from a charismatic background, um, but I currently practice or go to church in the Methodist church. Um, but like within this journey, I've also met so many people from different denominations. Mm. So be, prior to coming, I was just charismatic and then Methodist. So that was the only two denominations which I um, ventured between. And then I come to the faculty and there's like people with different denominations and different um, systems and church systems. And I was like stretched to like go to these churches and see, oh, this is how they do things. You also meet like friends with different points of views, um, different ideologies. And then you also just learn also how to understand someone's point of view and not to impose yours on somebody else's, but also just to learn from it. So I think in that aspect, I just learned so much from different religion, different denominations, we're all the same religion, but different denominations and how they practice, as well as like friends um, and how they think about God, how they me measure the world, and not just about God, but in every other aspect, so in life as well. Um, I also think what really helped me was like when we did counseling and we really dug deep into like trauma and mental health and unemployment and poverty and education and how we, being privileged enough to be in a university system can go out into the world and make effective change where these different topics are concerned. Fantastic. Making that change, making that difference in, in no. the world. Now, I also know that you um, have branched out in terms of student leadership within the broader campus here on, on Stellenbosch uh, and, and also within the faculty. Can you say a bit more about how do the faculty in a sense prepare you uh, for leadership perhaps broader than just theology or the church uh, and also uh, to make a difference? Yeah, so I started off my leadership journey as like a class representative for like a couple of classes. And there I really just like realized that I really have a niche, a notch for leadership. And I really just decided, and within the faculty, like there was one individual that kind of gave me like my big break. So within the faculty, I met someone that was part of leadership in the, bro in the broader university. And because I was friends with him, um, he kind of introduced me to the broader leadership. And I also now know in my own personal capacity, being that I am involved in the theology as well as in um, structures in the university, that I am also able to be that stepping stone for other students to also expand their leadership, not just within the faculty, but also greater, because the change that you can effect is so much greater when you expand your horizons. Um, so I started off as a class trip. I then went to different structures in the university. I'm back at the theology as like chair. I'm also serving on different councils, but also know that the university in and of itself also creates lots of platforms where we as an individuals as individuals can develop our leadership. So we, we have many courses that are offered 
it that helps you to develop your leadership skills. And these go on your transcripts. So when you leave this faculty, you have concrete proof that what you've done is not just academics, but you've also just, when you leave on your transcripts, they can see that you've done more than just study, but you've been influential within your the, the faculty as well as the university. So I think the university gives you a good stepping stone to expand just your surroundings and not just to have be academics. Mm. So I hear th three things, or perhaps four even, that you are saying. So the faculty as a class rep provides you a first small scale opportunity to, in a sense, express your leadership. Yeah. On a small level, with my little class, and there I grow. Secondly, through senior students, mentors who've yeah. been involved in the broader university, they are able to connect you to the broader university structures. And also, thirdly, you were saying, so after that, you were able to give out also, give back yeah. uh, to the community what you've learned, the broader student community through different structures. And then there was a fourth thing where you were saying, but there are also courses that are not related to your direct program, but broader leadership yeah. courses that you also were able to do and that comes on your academic transcript. Are those the four kind of things yeah. which uh, you, 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 you would uh, agree with me? No, definitely. So like it starts with small work like within the faculty because I think being a classroom is really attainable. Like take that responsibility. I know it's like very taxing, but like the rewards are so fruitful afterwards. The university also then provides us with the courses. Um, which have a variety of ranges and they keep on extending and introducing new courses every year. Um, and then also just being friends and making sure that you're integrated within the faculty. So you don't just are, you're not just there to learn, but you also connect, you also cre create connections mm -hmm. within the faculty. And because you create those connections, the possibilities are endless. Cause, um, for example, if you had met me and I see that there's maybe a, a position open somewhere, I could always just lend a hand and there you start your journey and then you can just propel yourself to go forward. Um, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Can you say a bit more? You've been now over the last two years, very difficult years. Uh, you have been the chairperson of the Theological Student Committee uh, and uh, you were in a leadership position, uh, but in a sense you were also a role model to other students. Can you tell us a bit more to our, our parents perhaps listening, what are the programs, what are the initiatives that, uh, that you as a Theological Student Committee also rolled out? to support students, especially students who are struggling. Yeah, so in the TSC we have different portfolios and our portfolios mainly focus on like student wellness, academic support. But if we're going to look like specifically within the faculty, I think it's very big that we had a mentorship program. And being that it was COVID, the connections weren't really there physically, but over the MS Teams virtually, I think, and WhatsApp, I think that was our greatest point of communications, like making sure that the students know, like that we do understand what they're saying and, and we do hear. And I know that during the last two years, COVID really just changed the trajectory of how students view like university, mental health, etc. cetera. Um, so we as a TSC mentorship, knowing that you don't just come to theology just to study it, but that you have, you make friends and connections. That really helps you in the long term round when you know that okay, I have someone that I can speak to and this person has a, a, a contact number to give to somebody. I also know um, the lecturer previously mentioned that the we have um, the chaplain of the university in our faculty. So he also provides these services for free of charge, obviously. So whenever there is a need, you can always go to the chaplain within our faculty and speak. I also know that we do have lecturers that also um, study pastoral care or have specialized in that, that are also willing to help when they do have time, as well as just like your lecturers. They are always there when you need something to somebody to talk to or something seriously that is on your mind. And I always encourage students to always never wait till the last minute, but to start early on, form those connections that you're really comfortable to the point where if something should happen, you're able to just go to your lecturer and be like, I'm struggling at this point, can you please assist me? And then also the university as a whole has many different structures that help whenever there's any need. So I'm saying like any need that, in, that could come across on your, your journey, the university is there to help assist. 
I remember, uh, Tamara, when I was still young, uh, many years ago, uh, having to decide, I was still in high school, having to decide whether I go to university. One of my fears was that you're going to sit in a huge class uh, and I'm, um, you know, <clears throat> an auditorium of 200 students and the lecturer comes in, he presents his lecture of 40 minutes or so and then leaves and I'm all on my own. Uh, and then next week it's the same story and I'm all on my own just trying to swim in a very yeah. big pool. Uh, now, is, is that also the kind of experience here at the Faculty of Theology? Yeah. Uh, if, if, if these students uh, join us, uh, are they on their own? Are they coming there, sitting in a huge auditorium and just, you know, uh, having to swim by themselves? Yeah, no, that is definitely not the case. Um, I think the benefits of theology is also just knowing. So when you walk in, you'll realize that we are an extremely small faculty. So by the end of the year, I will most probably know who you are. I most probably won't know your name, but I know who you are. We will all know each other in the lecture specifically because our classes are so small, especially when you continue going on over the years. You become so connected with your year group that like everybody knows everybody. The lecturers know your name. Yeah. The dean will most probably know your name as well you'll just know everything so and our tutors also because we're so small the tutors will be able to know you on a, a name to name basis most probably have your contact details so then there's always this connection because we're so small we can have um, deeper connections because we're a small click um, so that you can talk whenever there is an issue or there's a concern yes and I, I, I like the the word connect I, yeah. I like the word uh, knowing each other uh, by name, of course, you know, like you say, it's not always possible to know yeah. everybody because in a sense, uh, uh, you know, we, we also do not want to create unrealistic expectations. Oh, yeah, yes. But like Tamara said, knowing the face, you know, within our small class group, yeah. we know each other yeah. uh, and also, of course, within our different friendship groups. So tell me. I want to study theology, but what am I going to do with my degree in theology? Um, are there job prospects um, or is it a dead end street? Um, so that is not the case also. Um, I also remember going to theology. I went my first year and I was like, I wasn't sure. I kind of had an idea helping the community, but there was like something else that was brewing on the yeah. other side. I'm going into th to theology and I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and then obviously in the faculty, we often have people talk so you can get more information. And I think one of the main things are, so if you specifically want to go into the church, there is obviously a job opportunity for you. If you're going through with your specific church, there's a job opportunity for you most probably. Um, but if you're not, and if you're just doing the general or youth work sector, I know that theology is also a degree that is very flexible if you want to take subjects outside of just theology. So if you want to venture onto the BA, where they have variety of, of, of modules, um, you can do so. And that leads to like your postgrads being so in, uh, having a variety of options. So as I say, like I would want to do law, um, journalism and teaching, and those are all attainable with my theology degree. I also know that the university offers much more different diplomas than just this, and it doesn't just fall in um, the arts faculty or the law faculty. So um, I know there's HIV courses, there is sustainable development that you could do. So you obviously also need to know what you want to do. And I think it also just comes with time, but I also would like to suggest if you are a bit weary, you want to do theology, but you're not sure for like another step to speak on it your first year so that you, we can already just set up what, what subjects you need to take to know that once you graduate, you are set, you have the, the requirements needed for any degree that you want to, or post that you want to do. So in a sense, this first degree open up different yeah. possibilities, postgraduate diploma in journalism, yeah. or perhaps in law, perhaps education. Yeah. Uh, and I can do different things out there in society, yes. but with a specific theological focus, a theological lens.
Is, is that what you say? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So you obviously have, I always say that like theology is like my solid foundation. Mm -hmm. And I think upon mm -hmm. that, many things can be achieved because you have that one solid base that teaches you everything a little bit about, a little thing about, a little bit about everything. So you kind of have the overall idea mm -hmm. and then from there you move forward. But tell me now, um, as a theological student um, and talking about the solid foundation, does it mean that the theological students, when they walk on campus amongst many other students, they walk around with a big Bible in their hand, always praying, always uh, being seen as yeah. the, the holiest of holy? That is not the idea at all. Like, no, 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 no. Like, I look just like any other student. If you didn't know I studied theology, um, you wouldn't know. I just think that we blend in so well. So I don't think people should come with a perspective that we're walking around with our Bibles because that is not the case. We really just like everybody else, we just study theology. Like we, we have the same fun as everybody else. We do all the activities that everybody else does. We just study theology. Yeah, yeah. And also the same struggles. Yes, the same struggles, same struggles as everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if you say that, I want to come back to, and it's not a trick question, but, but then what is, what is unique then about the theological uh, uh, program? Uh, is it is it is it the fact that um, uh, is it the fact that I have a particular lens or a particular focus? What would you say uh, would then be the unique uh, contribution that theology makes to the development of someone? I think the unique contribution that theology makes is that we just have a particular lens. I think once leaving or when you're in the theology system, you have like this holistic lens that when you view people, you don't just view them like for like the face value, but it's also, it goes a bit deeper than just that. So then the connections that you do form when you are walking on the broader um, Stellenbosch, on the Roy Plano, et cetera, are such deeper connections because you kind of know to like not just see the person for face value, but for what is deeper. I think that is the unique thing that theology brings is that like your ideas that you take from it is like so segmented in like good virtues. So it's, it's love and it's kindness mm -hmm. um, and it's caring for one another. So those are the things we learn every day. Like in your assignments was probably you would write about like being kind and being good and being loving to your fellow neighbor. Um, so I think that is probably the watch is a bit different from all the other faculties. It's just that when you leave your holistic view of the people around you so much different because you know to look at the person, not just at the face value, but like deeper than that. Absolutely. So you as parents who are, who are listening, perhaps some of you are concerned, uh, perhaps some of you are not yet uh, clear, but, but through our conversation here with, with Tamara, maybe you have received a few tips as well, uh, pointers in terms of the future uh, for next year if your, your son or your daughter study theology. So I'm going to ask Tamara a last question perhaps that is also on your mind, and uh, perhaps uh, Tamara can say a few things about that. Now Tamara, if a parent drops off her s s child yeah, it's Stellenbosch, uh, whether it be January, February next year, depending on when uh, the results are coming out. Um, and uh, they would drive away out of Stellenbosch. Uh, would my child be safe here at Stellenbosch? What, what would be your response to that? What is the processes that, you know, whether it be the faculty or the theological student committee yeah. have in place? Uh, to also journey with my, my child. I have full confidence that once you like leave your, your, your kid, um, that they'll be taken good care of because like we said, the theology faculty is so small. And I do have the full confidence in the new TSC, knowing that they would do their utmost best to make you feel comfortable. Um, the child, obviously. Um, even the parents, I know that when we start off the year next year, hopefully if COVID is all well in that, we have such a good welcoming week program that is going to be so integral where you'll learn everything, you'll know everything. Um, and I also know that the students within the faculty, not just the TEC, go so out of their way to assist you. Like they are so loving and kind. Like you just need to say, uh, I'm lost. Uh, I don't know what to do. Can you please guide me? You can go to the dean's secretary. She would help you. 
you can literally just go to anybody and they would help and do the do the utmost best to help you or guide you. So I have the full confidence as well as not just the faculty, but like the broader Salem Bosch, when you drop them off at their residence, they also make connections with our faculty. So there's always like this connection that is had to, to ensure that you are safe and that you know what is going on. And then I also want to say like, please also, if you are struggling to so please voice it, because we can't do anything if we do not know. But once we do know, I know that people will do the utmost most best to help you. Well, thank you very much, Tamara. And thank you for speaking out of your own experience yeah. and also for the role that you are playing, still playing currently in the faculty, on campus, and also for the difference that, that they are making in the lives of our students. Now, to our prospective students and parents, you've heard it from one of our student leaders, one of our leaders, uh, not only in the faculty, but also on campus. And I'm sure who's going to make a difference in society as, as the years gone by. Uh, we want to welcome you. We want to encourage you to, to fill in those last uh, forms that, that need to be filled in. We want to encourage you come next year uh, when you get your results. And we hope for the best that you will join us at the faculty. We are here to shape lives. We are here to form that lens, that theological lens, particular worldview that will be able to enable you to make a difference in society. Uh, many others have gone through the faculty like Tamara. Many student leaders have been formed, public leaders have been formed, and maybe you will be the next one. So welcome. We are looking forward and we are waiting uh, to welcome you at the Faculty of Theology here at Stellenbosch University.